The liberal media slams the only credible Republican running for U.S. Senate in California, plus the latest numbers on how much illegal immigrant free taxpayer funded health care will cost you. All that and more coming up. I'm Carl DeMaio, chairman of Reform California, and these are the top stories we're following today. Uh, Last night, there was a debate in Los Angeles for the U.S. Senate race here in California. Did you know that there's actually a U.S. Senate race in California? Uh, Dianne Feinstein's seat is up for grabs, and everyone expects that it's going to be a Democrat-Democrat race in November. Why? Because the last two, the last two U.S. Senate races in California In the general election, we didn't even have a Republican make the runoff. It was a choice between dumb and dumber, between getting shot or getting hung, because two Democrats made it to the runoff. Um, The way California's absurd voting system works is that we eliminated, not we, the politicians and the special interests eliminated the primary process in California, where each party nominates a candidate for each office. Um, uh, you know, U.S. Senate, Congress, State Assembly, State Senate. Now in California, since Prop 14, about a decade ago, we have this absolutely corrupted approach where the top two vote getters of either party advance to the runoff. So if you have five Republicans running for a seat and only two Democrats running, it's very likely that the two Democrats will consolidate the most support because there's only two of them to split the Democrat vote. And five Republicans running for that seat, they go chop, 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 chop. They dilute the Republican vote. So only two Democrats make it into the runoff. You see how this scam works. And Democrats are a lot more, I don't know, united or uh, some would say orchestrated. Um, they basically have the powerful government union bosses tell people you're, a, you're the one to run. You're not the one to run. And if they thought, having two candidates would benefit them, then they will put two candidates in. But if they think only one candidate is what they need, they will clear the field. Republicans are the stupid party. They basically all jump in and uh, it's just, it's just a mess. We got to play the game. We got to play the game smarter. So in the U.S. Senate race, I will acknowledge for you that it's very unlikely that a Republican will win the U.S. Senate seat even if we get our candidate in the runoff in November. Is it possible? Yes. And that's why I always say, even in tough seats, we should contest every single one. Never give a free pass to a far left wing liberal. Challenge them at every turn. And it's important that voters have a choice in November. They shouldn't have liberal and liberal. They should have a liberal. Well, I'd like to see a conservative and a conservative. They should have a choice. And that's what Prop 14 has deprived them of. And that's why Reform California has our plain English voter guide, where we try to unite the vote behind one sensible conservative in every race. And a lot of times people say, well, why did you just endorse that one person? What about the others? I like some of the others, but we can't be foolish. We have to unite our vote behind one. So in the U.S. Senate race, you've got Adam Schiff. Ugh. Adam Schiff running for U.S. Senate. You've got Katie Porter and Barbara Lee. All three of them are members of Congress. All three of them are left-wing lunatics. On the Republican side, you have a gaggle of Republicans running for a seat that's really tough to win in November. Um, But there is one that has enough momentum, enough polling support, and even name ID to make it into the runoff. That guy is Steve Garvey, you know, the baseball legend. Dodgers, uh, Padres, Uh, he is running for U.S. Senate, and he's polling ahead of all the other Republicans, and he's actually polling uh, in second place right now. But if the Democrats dilute the vote and he goes into uh, third place or fourth place, then they will get the lock on that Senate seat, and we won't get a choice in November. So we believe that it's very important to put Steve Garvey on our voter guide. And it is uh, online at uh, reformcalifornia.org or go to electionguidecalifornia.org. The voter guide up there uh, breaks down each region of the state so you can look at your um, local races as well, or you can use the statewide voter guide. Uh, Please share the voter guide when your ballot arrives with all your friends and family and neighbors and chip in a contribution online at reformcalifornia.org so we can 
hire college students to canvas door to door, as well as mail the voter guides out to target voters in these flipping, flippable races, the, the target seats. But back to this debate last night. I know this, this is a long introduction for this important debate. Steve Garvey, not a politician, didn't do quite well. Uh, he was evasive at times, kind of fluffy at times. Again, I had him on my radio show on AM 600 Kogo uh, a couple months ago when he announced, and I, I told him on air that he needs to sharpen up his uh, presentation um, and be more comfortable in his own skin and um, not be evasive, be honest, sincere, and direct. I gave him that advice on air. Last night was not the best performance for a candidate. Uh, look, no, I, I'm not going to pull my endorsement. He's got my endorsement. I'm going to support him 100%. Uh, could he do better? Yes. Do I expect better? Absolutely. Uh, but he's the best we've got, and we work with what we got. Uh, but anyway, Politico is slamming on Steve Garvey. Um, so uh, how Steve Garvey became a punchline at the first California Senate debate. Um, the Democrat candidates just ganged up on him. So did the liberal media. I mean, isn't that what they always do with any Republican in the room? Uh, and so the reason why they're ganging up on him is they're trying to undermine his support with Republicans by saying he's not Trump enough. Now, this is how this Jedi mind trick works. Okay, this is the politics. Last night, Garvey, I'm not playing the clips because it was just absurd. Um, Garvey was asked repeatedly, are you going to vote for Trump? And he said, well, I'll make a decision later on on that. Dude, pick a lane. Is it that you don't know enough about Biden or Trump to make a decision right now? I mean, seriously. It's not like you have to do more research on what these two people stand for. Go with your gut. Go with your heart. Be honest, sincere, and direct. And make the right choice. Trump, obviously. Um, but I knew that Democrats were going to go after him on that because they're not trying to win Democrat votes. Oh, sure. It works for them to like grandstand. I hate Trump more than anyone else. Uh, orange man bad. It's a fetish. Um, but with Garvey, they're trying to get him not to say he's for Trump so that the Republican voters that are watching might pause and decide, well, if you're not with Trump, I'm going to vote for someone else. Um, it's a game. Don't fall for it. And sadly, Garvey fell for it. Again, I'm not going to give just, you know, positive coverage for Republicans when they need to do better. I'm going to call them out. Um, so that's, uh, that one, uh, there was another clip from last night that I wanted to share with you on that. No, there wasn't. Okay. So that's, that's that. Here's the clip I wanted to share about last night going into the debate. This is from flash report. And again, if you don't check out flash report, you should, it gives you daily news headlines at flashreport.org. Flashreport.org. John Fleischman, an activist in Orange County does a great job giving a summary of important stories that you should know about from across the state of California every day. And you can sign up for his email newsletter as well uh, to get an update every day over email for top stories. I use it. You should too. Um, but take a look at this anti-Israel protest, Fox LA protesters demand Gaza ceasefire during California Senate debate. They're just, I mean, this is the base of the Democrat party. They are pro Hamas. Mind you, don't buy this nonsense that, oh, they're just protesting in favor of peace. They want to cease fire so people don't die. The only people that the Israeli defense forces are trying to target are terrorists, Hamas terrorists. They are bending over backwards. They're trying to be as precise as possible. Israel has a right to defend itself. And this would be like extremist uh, leftists showing up. And protesting after 9-11, saying, oh, don't, we need a ceasefire. Don't go after bin Laden. That's what this is. October's attack for Israel is like our 9-11. And so uh, these protesters show up at this uh, U.S. Senate debate, uh, showing the real rot of the Democrat Party in California, the pro-Hamas, pro-terrorism points of view the anti-Semitic um, points of view that are rotting within the Democrat party. Now I have to point out this headline underneath. I don't, I don't have a subscription to the San Francisco Chronicle because I don't like subscriptions to liberal papers. I, I refuse to do it. But the San Francisco Chronicle has a story in influential LGBTQ group pulls Biden endorsement over is Israel Hamas war. In other words, the LGBT group doesn't want to endorse Biden 
who's their cup of tea on all the social issues because he's not siding with the Palestinians and Hamas. Do, do you realize how insane this is? That's like the pig buying a knife for the butcher, not just handing the knife, but buying and funding the knife. Uh, it is just absurd. Those LGBT activists don't care about LGBT. If they did, they would actually be siding with Israel, which has a infinitely better LGBT record than uh, Hamas and the Palestinians uh, when it comes to uh, how they treat gays. If you're gay in Gaza, you're dead. You have a target on your back. You will be harassed. You'll be bullied. You will be killed. Oh, but no, no, these LGBT activists, oh, they're so woke. They want to get on the side of Hamas. You people are absolutely batshit crazy, absolutely insane. You are cartoon characters. This headline alone is insane. LGBT, upset with Biden because why? Right now, Biden has not been good on Israel, but at least he's not siding fully with Hamas and, and the Palestinians. They're, they're upset with him because he's not backing the anti-gay Hamas forces. Absolute insanity. This is mock-worthy. That's why I, I saw it in relation to the, the debate last night with that headline, and I wanted to uh, cover that real quick. Uh, speaking of uh, liberal media, uh, every time a liberal uh, li media activist, a pretend journalist, um, gets fired, an angel gets their wings. Now, why are liberal reporters getting fired? Because they're so woke and not doing their job of providing quality, balanced coverage for their subscribers that subscriptions are plummeting. People are tuning them out. They're canceling their subscription. Thank goodness. And advertisers, therefore, with less subscribers are not advertising as much. So these newspapers, these liberal newspapers are hemorrhaging cash. So are the local TV stations. So is NBC and CNN, and, and it's beautiful. Uh, a bunch of reporters throughout the state, you'll hear uh, booing and howling and crying about the LA Times laying off a bunch of liberal um, activists who are pretending to be reporters. Matt Pierce says, LA Times management has notified me that 94 LA Times Guild members, that's the union, are being notified of intended layoff today or about one-fourth of the whole membership. Yay! Three-fourths left to go. Um, Jeremy White of Politico says, awful. Progress, but all awful. Oh, yes. You define it as progress for being less of a layoff. I'm defining it as progress for, yeah, just keep it coming. Again, if they were true reporters, I, I, would, be, I would be concerned. I believe in good local journalism. I think we need journalism in this country, but let me just tell you, journalism is dead in America, and it first contracted the contagion in, in California, where liberal uh, philosophies took over the important profession of journalism. Uh, let me give you an example. LA Times, according to California Globe, LA Times recommends keeping Los Angeles District Attorney George Gascone in place. Um, they want to keep George Gascone as district attorney. Oh, you can't make this crap up. George Gascone is hated by even Democrats in Los Angeles County. He has really bad support. I think like toe fungus and cockroaches and Lindsay Lohan have uh, higher ratings than he does, which is saying a lot. Um, Gascon is a pro-criminal district attorney. He's backed by George Soros. He has always let these criminals back out on the street. He's disparaged law enforcement and police officers. This guy is absolutely a threat to public safety. And that's why people wanted to recall him. And the recall committee couldn't find its ass with a search party and a map and screwed up the recall. So now our best shot to take him out of office is in the November election where he's up for re-election. Four more years of George Gascon is hazardous to health. We cannot have this guy stay in office. Throwing him out, by the way, would send a beautiful message that even Democrat voters in L.A. are upset with the pro-criminal policies and they want law and order back. But take a look at the Los Angeles Times endorsing this menace to public safety. You wonder why you all are getting your asses handed to you in pink slips? You deserve it. This sort of editorial is proof positive that you are untethered from your subscriber base. And, re and reality. 
And so you, you should have more people unsubscribe and cancel. You should have more, uh, you know what? Any store that's advertising in the LA Times after this editorial should immediately cut your advertising, eliminate the advertising. Because the LA Times wants the crime wave to continue so that your store is ransacked. So I'm calling on any store, any retail store advertising in the LA Times, pull your head out of your ass, cancel your ads, save the money, go uh, elsewhere, go to a, a, an outlet that supports you. The LA Times certainly doesn't. They don't care about your losses from smashing grabs. So this is, again, example number 572, why the LA Times needs to die a quick death as soon as possible, and maybe legitimate journalism will have a chance to flourish thereafter. A couple other stories I want to get to real quick. This is the illegal immigrant story. In the National Review, we, we brought you this story a few weeks ago. California has decided... Uh, after it started down this road in 2015, to offer illegal immigrants free health care, all of them free health care at your expense, taxpayer expense. Now, mind you, these same California Democrat politicians are trying to raise your taxes and repeal Prop 13. Oh, but they have enough money to give illegal immigrants a bunch of free health care, taxpayer funded health care. Um, the National Review has this really good story by uh, Taryn Bragdon. California ignores its own history to give illegal immigrants Medicaid. It goes on to talk about how in Illinois, uh, a similar program was put in place. Uh, and by the way, uh, the Democrats here say that it's going to cost uh, about $2 billion to, uh, to do this, uh, to expand. Um, it's not. Oh, actually, they say $3.1 billion annually uh, because it adds 10% um, to the Medi-Cal $37 billion annual tab. Uh, the actual estimate is probably in the neighborhood of $10 billion to provide illegal immigrant health care. I gave that estimate out two weeks ago, three weeks ago, when we first covered the implementation of this absurd giveaway. And now in the National Review, they're confirming the estimate I gave you. They point to a study uh, or an experience from Illinois. And it said after the state expanded the illegal immigrant free health care benefit to adults between the age of 42 and 64 in 2022, enrollment blew past projections, costing double what was anticipated. Last week, Illinois Governor Pritzker paused enrollment and capped the number of illegal immigrants they're going to pay health care costs for at 16500 They also, oh golly, established co-pays for illegal immigrants. Gee, imagine that, having them pitch in a little bit of money to their costs that the taxpayers are bearing. The, um, the reason why these costs are so infinitely higher is that they downplay the cost intentionally to gaslight the public because they want to tell people when the initial policy starts being implemented and everyone you know, gets upset. Oh, no, it's really uh, inexpensive. We shouldn't be paying a single dime. You know, we should be securing that border. And, and stopping the flow of illegal immigrants into our state by working with the federal government and demanding that the federal government do its job and stopping the uh, incentives for illegal immigrants by giving them free uh, welfare packages as generous as this. This is insanity. Our, our country is being taken over and our, our, our financial wherewithal is not there to care for everybody uh, demanding free health care at taxpayer expense. It is insane. It needs to end. So thanks to the National Review for um, providing the experiences of uh, Illinois and a couple other states in warning us that the, the numbers that California has put out on a couple billion dollars here, a couple billion dollars there, it is going to be astronomically more expensive. Look, at Reform California, we're trying to bring you these stories each and every day. At five o'clock, we post a new episode. So like and subscribe to this video to help us break through the algorithm of the liberal media and spread it, uh, but also subscribe to this channel and punch that notification button so that you get the update, uh, a new episode every day at five o'clock, Monday through Friday. Um, and then please chip in a contribution at reformcalifornia.org. We can't fight this fight alone. We bring you the news um, that the LA Times certainly won't be bringing you or the liberal uh, uh, television networks. We also activate voters to vote for change through our voter guide and other campaigns. So check out that website, reformcalifornia.org, chip in a contribution. Until next time, Carl DeMaio, Chairman of Reform California.
Help us break through the censorship of the liberal media. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and smash that notification button so you can stay up to date on all the developments in California news and politics. Also, please visit the website, reformcalifornia.org, for ongoing news coverage and to join one of our campaigns in the fight to take back our state. If you can, please sign up as a volunteer or chip in a contribution. This episode of Reform California with Carl DeMaio, paid for by Carl DeMaio for State Assembly 2024.